Welcome to the BLAST tutorial series brought to you by the Genomic Education Team at the Jackson Laboratory. This tutorial is a demonstration on how to compare or align two or more amino acid sequences using protein BLAST. BLAST is a powerful tool that allows you to compare and identify variation between two or more protein sequences. BLAST will use sequence alignment to accomplish this. Before beginning, it is important to have the protein sequences you want to compare handy. I have mine in a text file here. Then to start to the comparison of the amino acid sequences, navigate to NCBI's BLAST website on your browser. From BLAST's main landing page, select Protein BLAST on the right. Once Protein BLAST loads, check the box Align two or more sequences to load a second entry box. Without checking this box, you will not be able to compare two sequences. In this tutorial, we will compare one protein sequence with a reference sequence for that protein in order to determine if there, are if there is variation in the protein sequence. A reference sequence is considered a standard sequence, or in this case, a sequence without variation. To do this, we must enter the reference sequence into a, the large box under Enter Query Sequence. This will be the query sequence. I'm going to copy and paste the reference sequence for the protein into this box. Here's the reference sequence. Copy and paste. Be sure to always include the description line, which begins with the greater than sign. Then copy and paste the other protein sequence into the box that's labeled Enter Subject Sequence. You can enter one sequence into this box or multiple sequences. If you are entering multiple sequences, you can put them in one after another, each starting with a description line. It is important to include the description line because this will help you distinguish between the two sequences once they have been aligned to the reference. So our second sequence copy and paste. Leave all the other settings the same and then hit the blast button. The page will refresh with the results including the sequence alignments. Once this happens, scroll down to the table and look at the descriptions tab to see various aspects of the alignment. Now I only did one alignment here which you can see, but you should see one alignment for each different sequence you entered into the subject box. Look first at the percent coverage, which is listed here as query cover. In this case, the alignment has 100% coverage. Coverage is an indication of the length of the compared query and subject sequences relative to each other. 100% coverage indicates that the subject sequence spans the entire length of the query which in this case is the reference sequence. Next, look at the percent identity, which is abbreviated here per ident, which provides an indication of how similar the subject sequences are to the query sequence. More specifically, this value gives you a clue as to how many of the amino acids are the same between the two sequences. 100% indicates an exact match. We can see here that the percent identity is less than 100%, indicating there are differences between the two compared sequences. Now click the Alignments tab to see how many amino acids align between the two sequences. Change the view of the alignment to Pairwise with Dots for Identity. This will provide a view that is easier to visualize differences between the two sequences. Scroll through the alignment and locate differences between the subject and the reference sequence. Remember that the query sequence, which is the sequence listed on the top, is the reference sequence, and the subject is the sequence that we entered into the subject box. Including the description line when you enter the subject sequences into, the, into BLAST will provide a title for each alignment, as you can see here, protein sequence one. 
The alignment starts at a, the first amino acid in the sequence, which in this case is M for methionine. At the start and end of each line, the amino acid number is listed. The amino acids that are the same between the two sequences are depicted as dots on the subject sequence. Looking at the alignment, we see that the amino acid number 619, a number we can calculate from counting over from 601, is an asterisk in the subject sequence. This indicates that instead of an amino acid, there is a stop codon. In this example, the protein would be truncated at this point as the stop codon would signal to stop translation and the rest of the amino acids in the sequence would not be included in the final protein. Now, if this was a letter instead of an asterisk, this would indicate a change in the amino acid in the subject sequence. For instance, if we saw an A at position 619, this means that the tyrosine in the reference sequence changed to an alanine in that position. If there was an insertion in the subject sequence, including extra amino acids, there would be dashes in the reference sequence as placeholders. If there was a deletion, there would be dashes in the subject sequence as placeholders for the missing amino acids. Thank you for listening. For more information about or for other tips on using BLAST, please see the other tutorials in this series. Also, check out more resources provided by Jack's Genomic Education on our website.